Hey there and welcome to this video about date formats in Excel and this is a topic that can cause a lot of anguish for people. People often get confused about this and uh, find themselves quite frustrated and often resort to things like entering dates as text and things like that to try and overcome some of the barriers that they find when, when it comes to working with dates in Excel. So just a quick one here. What we've got is a couple of dates that we've entered here. I've entered a date as a text value in the first cell, cell C1. So if I click on that cell there and we take a look at the number formatting for that, we'll see that no matter which of the formats we look at, it shows consistently that 26th of April 2024. Now the moment you've got a value being displayed in this way or date being displayed in this way, you know that that date is, is essentially being seen as text and that's a problem. There's many ways to fix this kind of thing. What you could do is try and split this out into its constituent components. In other words, split it out into the day, the month, and the year, and then use some kind of an X lookup, V lookup type of function to return a numeric equivalent to April, which of course would be uh, four. But if you do have an actual date in a cell, so let's check, check out the next one. If we click on the next cell here, we can see that in this instance, it's seeing it as a number depending on which format we look at. So for example, in the in the percentage here or the currency or the number, we can see this value 45,408. Now, if you're wondering where that number comes from, that's basically when Excel records dates, it records it as the number of days since the 1st of January, 1900. So in other words, that date, 1 January, 1900 would be a one, second of January, 1900 would be two, and so on and so forth. And it would just simply count on from that position. And the, the decimal portion is the time. So if we look at the next example here, we've entered time. And if we take a look at that, we can see that it's showing it as 0 0.6. That's because the time at this point in the day, 1427 is six tenths of the way through the day. So hence 0 0.6 is the value that's being displayed in that cell when we look at it as a number. And this is something that helps us to understand how to work with dates in Excel, is that if you understand behind the scenes, Excel stores it as a numeric value, it makes it much easier to understand how to work with dates. If I was to go along and take that same value, the date value that I've just shown you and say equals C2, if we were to go along here and format this as a number, so we can see as a number, it's going to show 45,408. So it's 45,408 days since the 1st of Jan 1900. If we format this as short date, so if I once again say equals C2, and I format this as a short date, we can see that it just puts in that 26th of the 4th, 2024. Now, please remember, this short date format is dictated by your regional settings. So my regional settings, I have this set up in Windows to display dates as the 26th of the 4th, 2024, and long date to show it as 26th April, 2024. So on your machine, you'll need to look at what you've set up there and essentially pick or modify the date format to the way you want it to be if it's not suiting what you require. So we can see now if I go along and say equals C2 and format this in the long date format, there we go. What happens if we want to interpret that date as the day of the week. In other words, is that a Monday? Is it a Tuesday? What day of the week is this? So if I go along and put in the formula here. All right, so if I want to format this as the day of the week, in other words, I wanted to say M-O-N for Monday, T-U-E for Tuesday, and so on and so forth, then what I can do is if I go and click on the drop down, obviously we do have under more number formats, I can choose from date. And you'll see here under date, I have these two with an asterisk, one with the short date format, the other with the long date format. What this means is that it will react to the regional settings on the user's computer. So for example, this first one here, if this was the United States, it would show 03 slash 14 slash 2012. And as I said before, this is dictated by your regional settings in Windows. But you'll see that it doesn't actually offer us the option of showing this as a day of the week. None of these are suitable. And so what I need to do is go to custom and immediately upon clicking custom, we get this clue here because we can see that the current sample DD slash MM slash YYY will result in 26 slash 04 slash 2024. And so what I can do is I can use this combination of letters and slashes to essentially format the date in the way that I want it to appear. So if I put in a single D, you'll notice that it puts in 26. 
However, the moment I go and put in a second D there, then if it was the 1st of April, it would show 0, 1. On the 3rd of April, 0, 3. And then, of course, as soon as it gets to the 10th of April, it will show 1, 0 and onwards from there. So D and two Ds will essentially show us the, the actual numeric day of the month. If we then put in a third D, you'll see that now suddenly it changes and we can see that it's put in the word FRI, F-R-I, the abbreviated day of the week. And if I put in a fourth D, then it goes to the full Friday. So four Ds will show the unabbreviated day of the week. I'm going to leave it as three Ds. And if I click on OK now, we'll see that that has given us the abbreviated day of the week. So if we use the same logic then, if I once again refer to C2 in the cell and I use the exact same logic and I go to my more number formats and back to custom and this time around what I'm going to do is I'm going to show M, M, M and again like the D when I put in three M's it will give me abbreviated month name. As soon as I go to four M's it'll show me the full month name. So I put in four M's and there we go April in full. So if I want to display this as dd slash mm slash yyyy, well, of course, the easiest thing to do is to use a short date. So if I was to enter that C2 again, and let's go along, and I could just change straight to choose short date. Let's say I decided, actually, you know what, instead of slashes, I'd like to have some other character. Let's say I want to see it with dashes. So I could go to more number formats, go to custom, and essentially put in there, dd dash mmm and let's get rid of one of those m's so it's dd dash mm dash yyyy and as you can see there we go 26th of the 4th 2024 and click on ok now let's take a look at this custom format and see what else we can do with this so once again i'm going to type equals c2 and in here what we can do is more than just put in different days months and years so instead what i could do is say Right, so as you can see here, I've written there today's date is ddd comma dd dash mm dash yyyy and then full stop have a lovely day. So you can see that you can actually be quite creative with regards to this custom number format and do it in the way that makes sense to you. And just remember with these custom number formats, it's really like a mask that sits on top of the cell. And so the value in the cell has not actually changed. So all that's happened here is that the value that's being displayed is going through a mask, the custom number format. And as you can see now, it's going along and putting the full date into that cell. And that will update as the date in C2 changes. So if we, for example, were to go along and put in, let's say that this is the 20th of the 4th and press enter, we can see that that changes to reflect Saturday, 20th of the 4th, 2024. With the custom number format, you can actually go to town and be quite creative in that space. I hope that video helped out and showed you some of the date custom formats that you can make use of. Please don't be tempted to go along and enter dates as text values, rather put in the actual date and put a custom number format on top of that so that it displays in the way that you need it to. That's gonna be much better for you in the long term and it's gonna make sure that your spreadsheet works in the way you intend it to. And you're not gonna go along and have to do all sorts of workarounds to get your spreadsheet to display values in the way that you want and calculate it in an accurate fashion. If you enjoyed that video, why not go and check out our website, www.dataskills.co. We've got lots of information about our Excel and Power BI courses. We offer both face-to-face -face and virtual training services, as well as consulting. We really hope we'll see you on one of our future courses. All the best. Take care.